So today we are delighted to be joined by Maureen Connor, Director of the Capital District Youth Bike Band. Um, and as we prepare to bring Scotland Shop here to Albany, I'm very excited to be here in Celtic Hall uh, to hear the story of our local youth pipe band. So welcome, welcome Maureen. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you for joining us. So first of all, have you always lived here in the Capital District then? No, I've, oh. uh, well, I'm here almost 30 years now, so okay. I guess yes. that's long enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're well used to the area. Yes, then. yes. Yeah. And what was it that brought you here then? Uh, actually, piping brought oh, me here. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was. I had started the pipes back in the mid '80s um, with Nancy Tunnycliffe, who lives in uh, Lanesboro, Mass, which is in the Berkshires. Okay. And um, I ended up teaching at a school district out in Central New York. I left that position, was playing with the Schenectady Pipe Band at the time, and thought, well, as I'm figuring out the next part of my career. <laughs> yeah. I might as well be close to band practice. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so I moved to a small yeah. apartment in Schenectady, and I've been in different apartments, but I, I live in Schenectady, yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's, a, for anyone who doesn't know the area, that's maybe, what, 15 minutes here? From yeah, Celtic Hall. yeah. So, yeah, and the Schenectady Pipe Band practice here in the hall, like the youth pipe band do. So, right, yeah, right. this is a great hub for all of the pipe bands, isn't it? Yes. So, yeah, great location for us to be filming today. Um, so how was it that you first got into piping then? Was there anyone in the family that inspired you or any other musicians? Or no, no, no. When I was a kid, I played um, a bunch of different inf instruments um, from from grade school through college. I was in the college marching band, the UMass oh, okay. yeah. marching band. And I left college and went to do my work life and <laughs> didn't play anything musical uh, for a couple of years. And when I was in the Berkshires, I saw this tiny little ad in the classified section, uh, pipe band available for hire, teach lessons too. And I okay. nearly fell off my chair go. to um, go make the call. And yeah. and I called in this Scottish voice, which I was thought, oh, that's so cool, <laughs> um, answers the phone and he says, well, Nancy's not here right now, but if you're really desperate, <laughs> I'll loan you my chanter. And I thought, Oh, I don't know if I'm desperate, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's how I got started. Um, okay. Yeah, and it's become quite the journey yeah. um, since then, yeah. Oh, yeah, it sounds like it. So how did you then first become involved with the youth band here? So after I moved uh, to the Capital District, I was doing a bunch of different positions, um, temping, subbing, and um, playing with the Schenectady Pipe Band, and also teaching lessons. I had started teaching lessons here and there, and um, Emily Peters, uh, who was part of the pipe band at the time, suggested to me, she said, you know, Maureen, um, the Scotia Glenville School District has a pipe band, and they need a new teacher, mm -hmm. and that might be a way for you to get connected to the school district if yes. you're still looking for a teaching position. So I said, oh, okay, sure. and. Um, I went over there and it was a very small, small group. Um, they had gotten started in, in the early 90s as an after school evening club. Yeah. And they had, they taught pipers. Um, and then they kind of formed into a band. So by 1994, when I uh, took over, it was a small quote band. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I had, at that time, I, by that time, I had been playing in pipe bands for almost eight or nine years. So yeah. I knew, you know, the culture of pipe bands and mm -hmm. what, was a, what it was about. And I had been to summer schools and I knew of yeah. other youth pipe bands in the country. But there wasn't anything, you know, yeah. there are very few, unfortunately, very few youth pipe bands mm -hmm. in um, the United States. So, but I knew what was pot possible. Yeah. So the band, um, the band started, like I said, as an after-school club, and um, I thought, you know, this has a lot of potential. And it wasn't part of the school district formally. Um, the the group, the the woman who was the fine arts director at the time, said, Maureen, we'd love to help you in any way, as long as it doesn't cost us any money. And I said, that's perfect because yeah. what we need is a place to practice and a photocopier for music. There you go. There we go. 
And so we practiced at the middle school, um, mm -hmm. the high school and the middle school. I taught lessons in the school. I would go travel around from elementary <laughs> school to elementary school. Yeah. They let me do that. Um, and then I, you know, of course, I'm always trying to ways to, you know, develop the band and increase the band. And it became very clear that the, that the school district wasn't a large enough district to provide the number of pipers and drummers that you would need yeah. to make a band. Yeah. And so I, um, I had some kids who were private students of mine but not in the band, and I thought, all right, let's just open the doors. Yeah. Yeah, so that's when we really became a band. Yeah. Yeah. So it became, rather than Scotia Glenfell, it became the Catholic District. That's actually a longer story. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll tell it quick. Yeah. Yeah. So the, like I said, the band was founded um, in the early 90s. The school district, Scotia Glenville, is the school district for the village of Scotia and the town of Glenville. Yeah. And it was uh, originally settled by Alexander Lindsay there you go. Glenn, <laughs> um, who purchased the land from the Mohawk Indians. Mm -hmm. And that's why how we have that Lindsay connection. Yes. Yeah. Um, later on, one of the founding uh, members of the band and his dad, um, Frank Strauss and J.R. Strauss, went to Schenectady County to get... Um, to have the Schenectady County adopt the Lindsay Tartan mm -hmm. as the official Tartan of Schenectady County. There you go. Because it had this connection to yeah. Alexander Lindsay Glenn. Yes. Yeah, so then, um, anyway, back to the pipe band, we um, we uh, we kind of struggled along as a, as a young group uh, through the 90s and into the early 2000s, and it was, you know, it was definitely, uh, how do I say, the early formative days we had we had no money we would do parades and, and earn money through doing parades and various different gigs and whatnot and Frank Strauss actually um, knew we needed to get our own kilts yeah now he was kind of connected to the Scottish community and somewhat to pipe bands through his son who also continued to play pipes um, Frank as a member of the St. Andrew Society of Schenectady mm -hmm. um, had these connections and he found the there was a, a middle school in Rockville, Maryland that used to be called the Lindsay Pipe Band. Oh, okay. And they had youth size kilts. Yeah. Now one might wonder mm -hmm. why was it called the Lindsay Pipe Band? Yeah. Because Donald Lindsay, mm -hmm. who was our our mentor Yoda of all the pipers <laughs> okay. in the Capital District. Yeah. Had been, had lived in DC at the time. He was in the Air Force pipe band oh, okay. and had been the teacher and they, of the Rockville kids, the, the high school and the middle school, and they wanted to name the pipes, oh. pipe band after him. Okay, yeah, I was going to ask you about Donald because I know as well as uh, you know being director of the band here, you're also one of the instructors at the summer school that yes. Donald founded. So yes. can you tell me more about that and his connection to the the pipe band and you and yes. how that all came <laughs> together? <laughs> so Donald, um, he, he's been living in the area um, probably since the, the 60s. His, he and his dad bought land out in Petersburg and they named it Invermark because it reminded um, Donald's father of Scotland, okay. the hills and everything. Yeah. And um, although it's a lot more forested, but <laughs> um, it definitely reminded him of that. And they started a summer school. They brought over Bob Nickel, um, some of the famous Scottish pipers, to um, have the summer schools up there, up in yeah. the up in the mountains. Yeah. And uh, it was a bit of a retreat. Yeah. Sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, they had they had the whole A frame set up. So the school the school first was held in nineteen sixty two. Okay. Yeah. And over the years it's moved around to different locations. Right. Um this year we're gonna be back in person. Oh, yeah. Thank God. Um <laughs> after a couple of years on Zoom and we'll yeah. we'll be at Jiminy Peak. Okay. Um, which is in the Berkshires of Massachusetts. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That sounds great. Yeah, so Donald Donald was very prol uh has been is still prolific. Um helped get a lot of pipe bands in Massachusetts, New York, and Vermont started Okay, yeah. in the area. So many of the yeah. pipe bands, he had a teaching connection to them. Yeah. Well, obviously, as I mentioned, when we were setting up the interview this month, we've been celebrating Clan Lindsay. So 
we already wanted to find out more about the bands, yeah. but then when it, it tied in with this Lindsay connection, then I was like, right, let's make this happen. Yeah, so, yeah. And then to find out that a, a fellow Lindsay has been such an influential yes. member of the piping community here is fantastic. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, so you brought a little bit of Lindsay Modern Tart in yep. here to, to uh, inspire us today. So, yes. Yeah, so what age range is it that the, bi the band uh, covers then? So, um, so when the band, like, uh, the band was, when it first started, was actually very mixed age. Okay. Um, it was kind of a community band. And yeah. as I brought more kids into the band, I knew that the youth was the future and the last final adult, I found him a new home <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with the City of Albany Pipe Band. Right. Yeah. And, um, and we became a youth pipe band yeah. at that point. Okay. Um, yeah. We were, it was the early 2000s, we were a little bit in over our head, yeah. um, but we marshaled on and the Scotia Glenville Pipe Band, when we incorporated as a nonprofit, we took that name. Yeah. It was a great name, but I had some reservations. It was a great name because of where it started. Yeah, of course. But my concern was that we do parades all around the Capital District. Yeah. All, you know, up into Vermont um, and my concern was that people would think we were part of the school district yeah and Which we're not were. yeah we're not exactly so um, several years ago we finally changed the name it's more of a marketing thing to the capital district youth yeah. pipe band yeah. Which is not necessarily an exciting name, but no, we did a rebranding and we wanted to do it as yeah. a marketing yeah. tool. Um, and it explains exactly what the band does. Where so. we are, <laughs> yeah. who's involved, it's yeah. very, very utilitarian. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the kids, um, we generally recruit in the elementary schools. It's okay. um, um, somebody a long time ago said, you got to get them before puberty. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah. And before they discover, you know, uh, yeah. non, you know, boys and girls and whatnot. Yeah. And um, so we primarily recruit in the, um, in the elementary schools. Um, we do presentations. We send out flyers. We okay. do op hold open houses. Yeah. So the kids are all about sort of eight, nine, ten when they start. Yeah. And they start out on the practice channel, on the drum pad, and mm -hmm. then progress into the grade five band. Okay. Yeah. Which we have this year. Um, mm -hmm. They did play in a competition, two competitions last summer. We did an indoor, an outdoor one here at the hall, and then at um, the Scottish Games, the Capital District Scottish Games. Yeah. Okay. So they got their outing, and then the grade four band, they have. Um, that's the band that has been very successful, uh, yeah. winning the World Pipe Band Championships a couple yeah, of times, yeah. going, you know, doing well in Scotland. Yeah. And that's been sort of a big driver. Um, you know, we had role models, Eric McNeil, who was the drumming instructor here for many years, he and I, we, we one day decided, um, we had to figure out how to, how to sort of pro propel things forward. Yeah. And it was actually sort of a slightly dramatic story, um, but I, I was sort of at a point where I thought, I can't do this anymore. I, I've just worked so hard for almost 10 years and felt like I wasn't getting anywhere. I mean, I was developing the band, but it was still so small. Yeah. And kids like to be around lots of other kids. Yeah, exactly. So we, we made a list of every kid that we knew that played pipes or drums that lived within two to two and a half hours okay that was maybe playing in another band that wasn't challenging them or not playing in a band and we brought them all together and we had our first band day um i think we could only play scotland the brave together <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was only different skill yes yeah, the, the only thing we knew in common was yeah. scotland the brave or rowan tree or something like <laughs> yeah. that and it was just thrilling and you know yeah. I was a big cheerleader and then from there it started to gain momentum yeah and and that's when the band really started to push ahead we would have these monthly rehearsals everybody's is taking lessons so mm -hmm. they're being developed by their teachers yeah. I have a particular method that I use for developing pipers um, the drummers use a specific method that was developed by Reed Maxwell from British Columbia and then Eric McNeil used 
And um, now Andy Adams is our drumming instructor, and he continues that okay. that yeah. process. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that's great, and it's great to hear that. You know, yes, it took a while, but once you got that momentum going, then it's been going from strength to strength. Yeah. Seems like. Yes, so, definitely. Yeah. And obviously, you mentioned the two competitions you held last. Well, you were part of last year. Yeah. So, and um, where else would you compete and perform? And um, well, yeah. we do as far as competitions, we primarily go throughout New York and Massachusetts, mm -hmm. sometimes Connecticut, sometimes yeah. New Jersey. Yeah. Then we we try to get to Canada to the to Maxville. Yeah. The North American Pipe yeah. Band Championships. We try to get there almost every year. Um, yeah. When we do have a world's trip, sometimes the dates conflict. Yeah. It, there's not enough time, so we aren't able to go the same time as a world's trip plus the, the travel the parents yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have to I have to I can't overtax the parents because no, no. <laughs> do the parents usually travel over to Scotland and to Canada with yes with the band. Yeah. yeah so we don't yeah. do it as a you know band members only it's yeah. always with a parent yeah. or two or a family yeah, yeah. Oh, that's nice and it makes it a bigger group to, to get it does to know each other it does well. but yeah I have found over the years I, I have to stress we're we're not going to Scotland. Yeah. We're going to the World Pipe Band <laughs> Championships that happen to be held in Scotland. Yeah. And if you want to go to Scotland, go the day after the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about the practice. It's and about preparation. the practice. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever go to the North Berwick Highland Games? Oh yes. yeah. Yeah, because I know a lot of bands that use that as kind of their it's warm up, isn't it? It is. It's yeah. wonderful. Um, North Berwick is awesome. They they are so welcoming to the overseas bands. They love it. Yeah. Um, they love having the bands, and um, it's a it. It is the perfect setup because. Every single time we've gone, I always try to get in multiple runs. Mm -hmm. So depending upon, you know, we've had grade four bands, we've had grade three bands, and they allow bands to challenge up. Okay. So, and we usually have the required uh, material to do that. Right, yeah. And I always try, so I try to get in a couple of runs at the games yeah. because without fail, the first run, no matter what event it is, <laughs> They're all like nervous yeah. racehorses, yeah. ready to just go off at a million miles an hour. Yeah. And every single time we've done that, it's been like that, trying to, you know, yeah. trying to hold a team of horses back. Yeah. And we get done, and I say, well, we got that over with. Now we can all say we've played in Scotland. Exactly. Now let's get our heads back in the game. Yeah. And let's go. <laughs> and let's do what we can do, what yeah. we know we can do. Yeah. So it's so important to get that nervous first run out yeah, of the way. I can imagine. Yeah. Well, and it would be nerve-wracking enough for an adult, but for, you know, a youth band. Oh, then, yeah. Yeah, that just takes it to another level. So. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. they're a little more, sometimes they're actually funny. Sometimes they're a little bit more calm. But, um, it's, it, yeah. but it, you know, it's all. it really is all about the preparation yeah, and preparing them ahead of time. Yeah. And putting them through a schedule and they yeah. know what's coming up and... In, um, in 2019, throughout the entire fall of 2018, mm -hmm. that group had never been to Scotland. Yeah. The prior groups had all gone a couple times. Right. Yeah. This was a brand new group, so I had to like kind of start all over again. And <laughs> yeah. I said, the worlds are won by Christmas. Yeah. You know, by Christmas they're yeah. won. And uh, they um, and they they pursued and they they yeah. pursued ahead. Yeah. But it's really good when you go, when you get to Scotland, we oftentimes we stay in Glasgow, sometimes in Stirling. Mm -hmm. You have your practices. There's time for families to do things. It's not yeah. practicing no, eight no. hours a day. <laughs> no, no, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't last. But uh, no. I've always felt like if you, if you have a plan and you get through that week and you go to a couple games, you play at George's Square at the Piping mm -hmm. Live Festival, yeah. um, by the end of the week, they're ready. Oh, there you go. You're ready, and, and they know it, and you know it, and it's like, all right, now we just have <laughs> yeah. to wait. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I bet once you've made your final kind of performance and then just waiting to hear the announcement of, of that, oh. that must be the hardest part, I imagine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
And um, so where else would you uh, perform here in the, the Capital District? Then? Like parades or anything like yep, that? Yeah, obviously parades, primarily Memorial Day, mm -hmm. um, St. Patrick's Day, the High Holy Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. um, um, Fourth of July. Yeah. Um, sometimes some other random, there's flag day parades and whatnot, but um, anniversary parades when uh, the, the village of Colony is going to be yeah. holding their, holding their, 101st anniversary parade ah, okay. this fall so we'll play there yeah we often do a couple of concerts each summer um in the village of scotia at freedom yeah. park okay um usually the last wednesday in june or the first wednesday in july mm -hmm. we usually do that um sometimes we've played at other different um s small group events yeah so well not small group events but events that only need a small group yeah yeah, okay. for whatever reason. Yeah, and do many of the pipers go on to to play in other bands here in the region and carry that? Um, on? sometimes yeah. you know, not as not as much as you would hope. Yeah. Um, because I think I don't. It, it's just an interesting. I think those of us who teach youth pipe bands, we know that yeah. they're not all, all going to continue on, no. but definitely some. Yeah. yeah. Some do. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good, and I think it's the same with sport, isn't it? You know. They yeah. All, Kind of they either really stick with it or they start to fade yeah. away. But, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. The other thing that we did, the other performance that we did, which was a lot of fun this past year, and I know we're going to be um, involved in some way, shape, or form, is the Festival of Youth and Arts, okay. which is held yeah. up at, at SPAC, at Saratoga Performing Arts Center. Okay. And this past year, it was really awesome because we it was our first time having an opportunity to yeah. perform. Well, yeah, in a long time, I imagine. Yeah. So I was so thankful to have that because I had to... You know, guys, we have a performance. You have to be ready for this performance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and and we were able to do a lot of different things: solo, band, little mini parade, yeah. you know, ensemble, little quartet. We did all different kinds of yeah. things, which made it you know varied and interesting. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Sounds, sounds perfect. Yeah, yeah, and. So what else would you say you're inspired by Scottish culture? Being so interested in piping, have, has that kind of opened up the world of the rest of Scottish culture? To yeah, you? oh, yeah. absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Um, I've been to Scotland, I think, 20 times now. Oh, there you go, <laughs> yeah. plenty, yeah. Yeah, mo and it's all been with piping, but I've always made sure that I spend some time, even if it's just a day, going to do something. Yeah. So I've traveled all throughout Scotland. You've I've probably been, seen more than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, the only place I haven't really been is um, down to the borders. Okay, well that's where I've lived most of my life. Okay. So between the two of us, we can probably cover anywhere in Scotland. Anywhere. Yeah. I mean, we've been, I've been up to John O'Groats, Orkneys, yeah. Lewis, yeah. Harris, yeah. Skye, yeah. Aberdeen, uh, <laughs> obviously Inverness. I did, I did yeah. some piping, um, solo piping over in Scotland okay. back in the 90s and yeah. Went, you know, played at Ar Argyle or at the Argyleshire gathering and at the Northern Meeting in Inverness. So yeah, yeah. So that's great. <laughs> and had you celebrated your Scottish heritage before you got into piping, or was this all brand new to you? I'm not Scottish. That's okay. <laughs> and actually, celebrate. Right, so. right. When I when I played uh, when I went to my very first lesson, um, Nancy, uh, she was wearing a pair of tartan trues. I think <laughs> they would have been black watch in nature yeah. she played something on the pipes it was probably scotland the brave yeah she got done and she said this is the great highland scottish bagpipe and i thought oh what am i going to do now it's not irish <laughs> <laughs> okay so you have irish heritage yes then. yeah absolutely yeah. i mean and, and yeah. you know in fairness i would go to st patrick's day parades and yeah. see pipe bands yeah I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I think it's so interlinked, isn't it? And me, myself, I was born and lived in Scotland, but have Irish heritage too. And yeah. so many people that I've spoken to here in the region are, are similar in that they have either the Irish or the Scottish or a whole mix of both. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, exactly. And we're excited to get to celebrate St. Patrick's this year because back in the UK, obviously in Ireland, it's celebrated yeah. the rest of the UK on a small scale, but here I'm looking forward to Is this going to be your first St. Patrick's Day yeah. parade? Oh, yes. be prepared. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, no, it's, it's going to be It's a great. lot of fun. So, yeah, it's a it lot, like it. especially when it's good weather. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I can <laughs> yeah. 
And so obviously for us being new in the region here, is there anything else as a local expert you would suggest we go and see or do events that we should go to? Um, yeah, I would suggest a couple of things. If there's any kind of, um, obviously any Scottish festivals, um, but if you have a way to get up to Lake George. Yes. I'm excited to go there this and summer. And Saratoga. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. I know they do, um, they have different themed days at the Saratoga racetrack. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the summertime and Saratoga racetrack is huge in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be some things if you have, you know, the way to get connected and yeah. to work with other different types of events. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Those would be two cool places to go. Perfect. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to, to meet with me today and tell me all about the awesome. how your piping career and how the band got going. So, And we can't wait to actually get to see the band and yes. support you going forward. So, thank you, Emily. Yeah, Thanks for having no me. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right. <laughs> Thanks. <Ta. laughs>